I'm Dr. Catherine Skelding and I'm the Head of Cancer Cell Biology and a Senior Lecturer at the University of Newcastle and Hunter Medical Research Institute. I have over 13 years experience in the preclinical evaluation of new anti-cancer drugs and one of the drugs that I've previously been involved in investigating is just about to enter into phase three clinical trials. My lab and I have focused on acute myeloid leukaemia for the last six years. It has one of the worst survival rates of all cancers. Our existing therapies haven't changed much since the 1960s and they are very toxic. In fact, about one third of patients die as a result of their treatment rather than succumbing to the disease itself. But there is a glimmer of hope. About 50 to 80% of acute myeloid leukaemia patients have high levels of a molecule, a protein called BALK. Patients with high levels of BALK have an even more aggressive form of disease. They survive for significantly shorter periods of time, their disease is more likely to come back, and they're less likely to respond to our existing therapies. However, over the last few years, my lab and I have been researching BALK, and we now understand how BALK produces such poor outcomes in these patients. We now know how BALK makes leukemia cells more aggressive and how it induces resistance to the anti-cancer drugs. We have developed a drug that targets BALK and we have shown that this drug kills a variety of leukemia cells in the test tube, including cells from patients that have relapsed. We have shown that this drug outperforms existing leukemia treatments in our laboratory models. However, there is a caveat. This drug only works in 20% of situations that we've tested. I've started collaborating with computer scientists and chemists, as well as continuing my existing collaborations with haematologists and clinicians. And we have now developed a panel of drugs that can target BALK. These drugs are even more effective than our first drug. They kill leukemia cells at even lower doses while still leaving normal cells unaffected. They will produce fewer toxicities and side effects than what is normally associated with anti-cancer treatments. I'm frequently asked by clinicians and patients when will these drugs be made available to them in the clinic. My answer is that we need more funding to continue this work before we can move them into a clinical setting. I would like to thank Tor de Cure for all of their hard work in supporting cancer research and also for considering our research application.